Okay, what you're seeing is my breakout board in Arduino Nano. An 8-digit, 7-segment display driven by a Max 7219. And there's assorted sensors and so forth on this breakout prototyping board down here. What you're viewing is an 8-digit, 7-segment LED display driven by the Max 7219 display driver. It has two modes, basically dot matrix and binary coded decimal. Here I'm going to discuss how to, cre how to use binary coded decimal to address these type devices. The temperature that you're seeing is being generated by one of two sensors, a TMP36 or a DS 18B20 digital sensor. Those are discussed separately elsewhere, but right now this just, I'm reading um, centigrade temperature in this room, and that will be discussed elsewhere too, but on the focus of this is BCD from integer to BCD conversion for the Max 7219 display controller. All right, since many of these projects revolve around the Max 7219, let's take a quick look at again at the device. We're going to clock in serialized to parallel a 4-bit address and an 8-bit um, data byte. When you set this register known as the mode register and you latch the data into this um, SRAM, it's going to do two things. If the mode met register is set one way, the ROM will be more or less bypassed and you will have the seven bits of data go right to the segment drivers so that you can make up your own pattern. But in this case, I've set this to use the BCD ROM that's in the system. So you have to have a code which is D0 through D3 in that case, and D7 for a decimal point. What does that mean? Let's take a look at the code chart down below. Here is our code chart, and it only uses bits D0 through D3 to form a 4-bit binary coded decimal code. Also, if I set bit 7, I will turn on the decimal point to the corresponding digit. So, I'm going to have to send information from Arduino. I'm going to have to clock in the proper BCD code. Unfortunately, few microcontrollers operate in BCD. They operate in integer. So, the discussion now comes I have to convert this integer value to a binary coded decimal value. All right, <coughs> excuse me. Let's look at the BCD conversion of the number 162. 0 to 255 can, sit, can easily occupy 8 bits in normal integers. But you will have to use 12 bits, that's a byte and a nibble, to represent the same number as BCD. You're going to need 12 bits. And how to convert to this 12-bit logic to this particular code, well, you can go around on the internet, and they have all of these things where you shift left, check to see if it's 5 or more, add a 3, check a 5, shift, all over the place. Um, it, that might work okay with one or two digits. Try it with five or six. It really is a mess. There is an easier way to do this. Up here is a code that I found, found that works with a single byte. And it works well if you don't exceed 99 on it. All it does is it takes this value val it divides by 10 and then left shifts by 4 and then ORs that with VAL again 
that has been that has been run through a modulus 10 and adds them together basically ors or adds them together and it works for 99 but up to 99 but then again the answer again will exceed a byte if you go above 99 it's got to be a better way and this is what I ended up doing all right let's do a quick review what does a modulus do this pertains only to integer arithmetic a modulus as opposed to a division when you divide integers any remainders or fractions are dropped a modulus retains the remainder for instance 101 modulus 10 will give you a remainder of 1. 120 modulus 10 will give you 0. 99 modulus 10 will give you 9. This is the secret to, to doing binary code at decimal, and it goes as follows. Let's move down here. Now, I did this in a for loop and I started with the number 9999. The idea was to count from 0 to 9999, no decimal points or anything else on the max 72, uh, on the max uh, 7219. All right, what do we do? We have the number, okay, we have I i equals zero, i less than and equal to count, and i plus plus. First of all, j is going to be equal to i. That's the first thing we're going to do. Then we're going to define a integer digit. Digit equals j modulus 10. All right, whatever is digit, whatever the remainder was, and the uh, position on the LED display, one is the, is the first digit on the far right, I will write whatever that modulus value is. It's going to be 0 to 9. It can't be anything else. Then I'm going to take J and divide it by 10, do another modulus 10, and on the second digit I'll write that result to the second digit, divide by 10 again, do the same deal with the fourth digit, but as I showed here, whatever the, what I also added 0x80 to digit, because that cuts on my decimal point, and if I wanted two decimal places, I had to cut on the decimal point in the third digit, because the decimal point is on the right side of the digit, that's the way the electronics is. Then again, down here to the fourth digit, we had to divide J by 10 again, do another modulus 10 on digit 4, whatever the result of digit happened to be from that modulus, and then delay 200 milliseconds and go around again. Okay, fine. What if I had to do this for eight digits. I would have had to do this eight times. Not a very good use of code. Let's look at a far more compact program instead of uh, this. Alright, I explained how the temperature sensor calculations worked in another video. I won't rehash that here. But I'm going to start here where I defined a float value temp. This was the formula to get the temperature sensor reading. Now I have to send an integer to BCD count. The conversion, the binary coded decimal conversion routine works with integers, not fractions. So I changed the value of temp after I multiplied by 100 to retain my two decimal places and then I you change the from float to integer to a value integer called count. Now I sent count and I specified two decimal places so here's the integer value to be converted and displayed and this is where I want the uh, decimal point 
placed. I want it two decimal places, as you saw in the earlier videos. Let's note a couple of issues before we jump into the coding. Binary coded decimal, the conversion only works with integers. You really can't do it with fractions, but I want to display the fractions as well, and I want two decimal places. I, of course, have eight digits here, but I don't want a bunch of leading zeros. So going back to my thermometer program, I'm not going to rehash that, I ended up with a value of temp which was a floating point value of a couple of decimal places. To retain my two decimal places, I multiplied temp by 100. Then I changed it over to an integer value, and then I sent to BCD out the va that integer value as ca called count, and I also want two decimal places, which I specified here. So this is the integer to be converted, and this is the number of decimal places, in this case, two. Note that the decimal points on these particular displays are on the right side of the digit. So I would have to turn on the decimal point in the third digit to get it here for two decimal places. All right, here is my binary coded decimal out routine. I have my, uh, here is my integer, j, and here is my byte des decimal point. That tells me how many decimal points I want. I will define a in new integer digit and i, which I will set equal to 1. In this case, I will use a while loop as opposed to a for loop. You can use a for loop if you want to. I'm using a while loop here. I like it a little better for this application. All right, first thing I'm going to do, just like before, is I'm going to do a modulus of j. Whatever that value is, it's going to be in digit again. Now I'm going to do a couple of checks on digit. All right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to check to see if i is equal to decimal point plus 1. All right, if I, remember what I said, you had to put the decimal point on the third digit to get two decimal places. Well, if, dec if the decimal point is set for two and I add one and I is equal to three, then it's going to also, and it's also got to meet the condition, this is an and, decimal point must not equal zero, then I'm going to digit is going to equal digit plus 0x80. The 0x80 turns on bit 7 in the 70 in the uh, decoder. Bit 7 is your um, decimal point. So I set the bit high. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is check another condition is I'm going to make sure that j is not equal to 0 and i is greater than decimal point plus 1. In that case, if that condition is met, that is, then I'm going to set um, 0x, 0f. That is the code that simply turns off the associated display. Nothing is displayed. That's how I eliminate my leading zeros. If all the conditions are met and everything's ready to go, I will send this to the max 7219 write routine that I discussed in another video. I will send the value i, which is the BCD code. No, I, I is the uh, digit position. That's your position, which display of the 1 through 8 that you want and digit is the value to be displayed on the appropriate digit. Fine. Now I'm going to take j and divide by 10. I'm going to increment i and then I'm going to loop back and do it again. And I'm going to do this eight times. 
So if this works out right, I will have these two numbers here. Remember when I multiplied the original value by 100? That was these two values that were recovered on the right side of the decimal point. When this hits, when this becomes, um, when it becomes decimal point plus one is met over here, which is, means if I send in a two, two plus one is three, turns on the decimal point in the third digit, should have had that. Then whatever this value is here on the following digits, fine. Then the four, then I eliminated the four leading zeros, which cuts off these with that code down here, 0x0f blanks the appropriate digit. Do it eight times, that's it. That's the whole program. And I could do this with any infinite numbers of digits. I just have to change um, this right here. If I want to do this with 16 digits and string two of these together, the output of the first goes into the input of the next. Change this to 16, and you can do all 16 digits. And that's my um, integer to BCD conversion routine. Whew, mouthful. Okay, this will be up on the website. You can study the code there, and then you can come back and look at the video again as I walk you through the coding. Try it for yourself. Again, the idea here is to learn some coding and understand how this works with the hardware. You got two things going on here. You got hardware and you got computer code. So good luck. Keep building and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.